I wanted to do a section on the ADA. I don't think on this uh, channel I've done anything on the ADA. Um, I don't know why. I just haven't thought of it. <laughs> so, but I think it's time, especially now that people are moving around and traveling more. I think it's really important for you all to become familiar with the ADA and the support you have in regards to communication and people with hearing loss. <laughs> because especially if you're traveling through the airport and you need to communicate with all these people, if you have other disabilities that also need to be attended to, um, the, the staff at the airport really need to know if you need an interpreter, if you need captioning, um, what is it that you need uh, to be able to communicate with them. So uh, traveling from one place to another might not be a big deal for you, and you know, you've done it a million times, so, and you don't require any assistance, that's, that's great, um, but do alert the staff either on the plane or, you know, in the airport that you are coming through. And uh, these are the methods that you communicate through. Yeah. <laughs> now, there are a ton of ways in which you're going to run into needs of, of clear and good communication. And that's with police officers. That is in hospitals. Um, I can tell you right now that if you are engaged with um, first responders, with officers, if it's an emergency, uh, let's say you're doing something wrong, the officer doesn't know why you're standing there with a gun and, you know, chaos has erupted, they're not going to stop and, and dial 211 to get uh, an interpreter. <laughs> so they're going to arrest you right then and there. <laughs> and they don't care what you use, sign language or written word or what. <laughs> they're just going <laughs> to get you down and put handcuffs on you. If it's an emergency, you do some, you're doing something very wrong. Later on, when they need to interview you, yeah, <laughs> they'll get a sign language interpreter or they'll get um, uh, captioning to be able to communicate with you, <laughs> but not during the emergency. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the victims or, you know, the people who observe the situation, uh, for them, they'll also, you know, if they have hearing issues or they're deaf, they will get, you know, sign language interpreter over there as soon as possible, or they'll get, you know, captioning. So either way, uh, once the emergency is passed, <laughs> If you are in the hospital and you are choking, they're not going to spend time on the phone trying to find an interpreter. They're going to save your life first, and then <laughs> they'll talk to you later. <laughs> so <laughs> that's really important to know. <laughs> Emergencies first to save your life, and then they'll you know, fix a communication issue. But hospitals and clinics and doctor's offices do have uh, the full responsibility to get an interpreter or um, real-time captioning for you. You have to give them time because it's hard to schedule these people. Uh, there's not a whole lot of them out there, and um, it's really important for them to have time. They want to do it, but they need, for the most part, but they need time to be able to schedule them. So please give them two, three weeks, you know, to be able to call and schedule uh, an interpreter, a uh, sign language interpreter, or real-time captioning for you so that your uh, office visit or your meeting with your doctors at the hospital goes well and it's professionally done. Um, you, you don't want to miss any kind of communication. A doctor who comes in and says, I know a little bit of sign language, no, go home. <laughs> go home. It's really important for you to be able to communicate you know, the medications you're allergic to, uh, you know, and any treatment that uh, is urgent for you. 
so and to have the correct uh, communication methods present. You know, it's not an emergency. You need to get the interpreter. So uh, whether it's real time captioning or a sign language interpreter. So you have all these rights, and it's important for you to know them. You know, police officers, hospitals, medical clinics. Um, if you go to other services, uh, movie theaters, um, you know, things like that, museums. So you do have rights. So it's, it's really important to, to understand that there's not many real-time captioning people. There's not a whole lot of uh, sign language interpreters out there, and so people really need that time to schedule them. So some people just say, no, it's not my responsibility. I don't know what to do. You know, I don't know who to call. Baloney. <laughs> but you can be very happy to give them a number <laughs> to, to call and schedule it. So it, a lot of education needs to be done still for the uh, deaf and hard of hearing. So really, there is on the ADA webpage at the bottom, there is, uh, if you click on communication, that's what it's called. If you click on communication down at the bottom of that page, there's going to be a blue box, a light blue box. And there, it's going to give the different important sections so you can read about it, understand your rights, and know what to do next. So, um, and how to encourage the company, the organization, uh, the service provider to schedule, to go ahead and schedule a um, interpreter, a sign language interpreter, or the real-time captioning. So that, that can happen. It's their responsibility. So don't, don't be like, oh, I'll just bring mom. You know, I'll just bring my cousin. No, especially when it has to do with medical and serious medical issues. It's really important for you to have somebody professional there that's going to help the communication and that you um, and the communication is clear between the doctor and you. Um, and if anything goes wrong with the real-time captioning or with this especially with a sign language interpreter, let's say the sign language interpreter is just not doing sign language, it's doing some goofy, crazy thing, you need to alert the doctor, this person cannot do sign language. I don't understand them, and uh, this is, we need to reschedule. So this is really important for you to know that you have rights. The ADA protects you, but it's, it's important for you to understand how, how it protects you, how to use the ADA, and if things go wrong that you are with a service provider and they refuse, oh no, that's your responsibility, whatever, I don't care, uh, go to another doctor. Y you, can, you can absolutely uh, touch base with a lawyer and, and make sure that they understand their, their legal responsibilities in regards to the ADA. So I would hate to do that, you know, it's, it's a hassle, but you know, it's important for people to know about the ADA and their responsibilities in, in regards to the ADA for you and for me and for the service provider. So everybody needs to be on the same plane when it comes to communication. Um, and you can send them, if this is a new doctor, or new service providers, you can send them a letter and say, this is what I need. You know, a lot of times I would, I would like to, for my chart, with the doctors when they open it up for them to know there's a communication issue, that I am deaf but use cochlear implants, but it's really important to face me because if they turn their back, washing their hands, doing something else, I'm not gonna hear them. I'm not gonna understand them. So, you know, for that meeting to go well, they need to face me. And sometimes they understand, sometimes they don't, sometimes they overdo it. <laughs> I never know what I'm gonna get. <laughs> so uh, with the nurses, sometimes I have to uh, alert them because they go to get whatever, whatever machinery and they, are, they have their back to me. 
can understand diddly squad of what they're saying when they're working with the machinery and they have their back to me. So it's so then I speak up. You know, I'm I'm very hearing impaired, and for you to have your back to uh, to me uh, doesn't help. <laughs> so please turn around. So you know, then you know, and they're they're glad to do it. But I think that you know when they walk in, my cochlear implants are pretty visible, and it's pretty irritating that they don't observe the patient first to see, okay, what do I need working with this patient? And I don't care who they are, what they are. <laughs> you know, I, I think it's really important for anyone who is a provider to take a look at who they're working with and um, what's going to be most helpful and not to be careless. So in, in communication from A to Z. So the ADA is there to support you. I really encourage you to go to the ADA page, and I will leave the link and go to that blue box at the, bun at the bottom and look at the different sections uh, that correspond to you and know your rights. You know, and again, when there is an absolute emergency, nobody can stop and get an interpreter all of a sudden. <laughs> oh, Real-time captioning, not happening. They're going to attend to the emergency first, and then when things have calmed down, they will, you know, sit down with you and interview you and figure out, you know, what needs to, because sometimes, oh, it's an emergency, and they didn't, you know, know. There are special circumstances in which they need to save your life first or get something done or protect you, whatever it is, first, and then when they sit down to interview you, they will, you know, get an interpreter, real-time captioning, person and then they'll you know talk to you calmly so that's really it's it's common sense and I think those of us who have hearing loss have been out there uh, for quite some time and, and we know we know the we know the ropes already and so <laughs> you know if I'm gonna be in a conference with several doctors and they're gonna talk about a special intervention or a special treatment then I'll say, well, let, let's get a real-time captioning captioner person in so that you know I can I can follow um, because you know it's it's important to me and I want to understand from A to Z. You know, I usually have a nurse with me or a support person, but you know I don't want to rely on them because both nurses <laughs> have hearing loss. <laughs> hate to say it, but they both do. <laughs> so I, I prefer the real-time captioning. And it's been rare that I've had these <coughs> big meetings with doctors. Sometimes I've had those uh, when I've been in the hospital for a couple of days, and so then they meet with me, you know, in a group. And so then that's when I say, you're going to meet with me. You need to have a real-time uh, captioner in there. Um, <coughs> so tough beans. <laughs> you knew that meeting was coming up anyway, so go ahead and schedule it. Uh, and sometimes the hospitals have special contracts with, with a group or, or certain people, and, and they can get them, you know, to come in uh, with a week notice. So, um, so I just wanted to say that the ADA is there to support you, and in what circumstances, what can you ask for, what you cannot ask for, and again, emergencies, mm -mm. <laughs> uh, But uh, if, if an officer, uh, you know, stops you on the road, it's really important to know what, what your rights are. Um, I have a, uh, I don't have it here. Uh, I used to have it in the car, but if an officer approached me, it was an issue because usually it was on a busy street, and so it had, it had graphics on it, and the officer could point you know, that was going too fast, or, you know, they're going to give me a ticket, <laughs> or, um, you know, there was a weather emergency, you know, whatever it was, there was graphics on there, and it, it was really cool. If I can find one, uh, I will uh, post it there. I will post a link, so you can uh, copy that, and uh, I think at our police station, uh, they have that now, so we can print it out. We did one here in the state of Wisconsin, uh, in uh, conjoined with the police uh, station. I don't know if the fire department, 
you know, the fire department might uh, have access to it too. But, you know, it's those details that are really important and tools that are really important to be able to uh, communicate with the first responders in, in, in every way, as long as it's not a critical uh, emergency. So I wanted to bring that to your attention uh, about the ADA. Uh, it's extensive, uh, but you can look up the sections where you interact more with, with groups or organizations uh, and with service providers and know uh, where you can ask for uh, support and, and services prior to those appointments. All right, so if you have any experiences that, that you want to um, share, you know, I can share one that was kind of cute. Um, I went to a restaurant. Uh, a family had invited me to dinner, so, and I was with my service dog. I had a service dog for the deaf, and so he was with me, and um, because I had a balance issue as well, the service dog had a special harness, and I was holding on for my balance. Um, that was a time where I could walk. I can't walk much anymore, but, you know, he, uh, we were standing there in line. And uh, one of the waitresses went up to the family and, and whispered something, and they all kind of looked at each other like, what? <laughs> and then they said, oh. <laughs> and they started laughing, and they said no to the waitress, and she walked away. So I had no idea what had happened. But um, then we went in, and, and we were seated, and so I asked the family, what, what happened? <laughs> so <laughs> they said that the waitress was wondering if I needed a menu in Braille. <laughs> I was like, what? Oh. <laughs> and it dawned on me the harness, the balance harness that I was using looked very much like the harness for the blind. <laughs> so, so when the waitress came back, I thanked her for being attentive to that and for her training, her good training, uh, but I was not blind. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she was very apologetic. I said, no, no, don't worry. I just wanted to thank you for being observant and in offering, you know, that, um, that tool. So, you know, that's, that's something that, that we need to be aware of. You know, if you're in a movie, uh, you know, if you go to a, a, a movie place, they should have something to assist you to be able to hear the movies. They should have, um, you know, for, for our tea coils to pick up something. Uh, a lot of times they don't, and they need to be you know, scolded for that and for them, for us to encourage them to keep the uh, headphones and things, uh, you know, up to date and with the correct batteries, blah, blah, blah. So, so we can come and enjoy the, the, the movie uh, just like anyone else, even though we're hearing impaired. Uh, th for the deaf, they have some special screens now that um, pop up and they, they can read what's being said in the dialogue, which is pretty cool. But the staff, n none of them know how to work it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's another issue that the staff really need to be up to date on how to, how to work the equipment that they have for the deaf and hard of hearing in the movie theaters. So <laughs> um, in a lot of uh, museums now and art museums, uh, they have, you know, sign language uh, when there's narrations about a particular story or a painting, they have interpretation sign language interpretation right in there embedded in, in the storyline. So, so that's very cool. Uh, sometimes I've been able to connect directly in my cochlear implant to um, the narrating piece where they're telling the story in, in the museum, and that's, that's very cool. So w yeah, there's more and more accessibility, but still a lot of education needs to happen. And so, um, you know, even in our apartments where we live, there is uh, protection for us that the landlords absolutely need to put in at least one signaler for smoke detector. All right, so my invitation is to, for you to catch up with the ADA. Know your rights. 
know um, what is allowed, what is not allowed, um, what is the responsibility of the other person at the other end to communicate with you. So then any questions, any uh, stories you want to share, feel free. And um, I think together we can put together uh, uh, scenarios that are important for us to know and to learn about. Some are pretty funny, uh, some are not. So, um, but there are, I think, I think there are some websites where I can uh, post uh, a link so you can take a look at those scenarios and hand how that person handled it or how they should have handled it or how the provider should have handled it. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. I don't want to go on and on about the ADA. It's a matter of you uh, catching up and knowing, knowing how the ADA supports you.